The World of Cartooning with Mike Peters is made possible by a grant from the Mead Corporation. Paper, packaging, school supplies, and electronic publishing. Hi, I'm Mike Peters. There are all sorts of cartoonists, from social satirists to comic strippers to animators to editorial cartoonists, who cover the entire spectrum of political beliefs. Now, what makes today's guest really exciting is that he is not only a biting, satirical, social commentator, but he also does light and whimsical children's books. He's won every imaginable award, including the Overseas Press Award and the Pulitzer Prize for editorial cartooning. I think you're going to love him. I'm talking about the one, the only, Tony Auth from the Philadelphia Inquirer. Thank you for coming here. This is really this is really a, a joy you, to Michael. have you have you on the program. <clears throat> well, tell me about when you got the bug uh, uh, for drawing. When you knew that you wanted to start drawing. Well, my uh, I was in bed for a year and a half when I was five. Why? And I had rheumatic fever. Oh no! And my mother started uh, teaching me how to draw. One day, um, she had a, a car that she drew that was very stylized, kind of like this. And then she said. And there are the other two wheels. She was trying to teach me about perspective. But uh, the main thing, I think, was that I used to listen to a lot of radio. There, there wasn't television yet. And mm -hmm. I would listen to The Lone Ranger and The Green Hornet and all those fabulous adventure shows. Mm -hmm. And there were also comic books about the same characters. So there was this audio-visual link. And then I tried to draw my own pictures of all those people. So I'd be on The Lone Ranger fad for you know, two or three weeks, and I would learn how to draw the Lone Ranger, and then I'd move on to something else, and, oh, uh, goodness. you know, that, that's how I, that's how you learned to draw, isn't it? Yeah, sure. My mom, my mom w would, uh, would uh, get me on my front porch, and she would, uh, and she would tell me a story, and then I would, uh, and then she'd give me uh, paper and stuff, and she would say, okay, now draw what I, you know, draw the story I say, and then she's, a little boy would walk down the street, and I'd draw a little boy walking down the street <laughs> and stuff, and um, I think a lot of us, probably get into this because it's what people say we do well. I mean, I mean we get credit for it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, and, and then we just kind of follow it up. It's interesting, too, because when you first start, you're always copying because that's all you know how to do. Mm -hmm. And at some point, in my case, my father said, well, that's all well and good, but when are you going to draw something original? <laughs> so, you know, he yanked the rug out from under me and made me uh, go out on my own. To me, you always look like a cartoonist. I mean, you've got the beard. If I saw you in a, on, on an elevator or something, I'd say, now that's a cartoonist. You know. uh, <laughs> uh, 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 do you have any idea about what you would be doing if you weren't doing cartoons? I think I, would, I might still be a medical illustrator, which I was for about five years before I got into this. A medical illustrator? Yeah. Where? Uh, I, mean, with I was at a large teaching hospital in Southern California. And uh, I did surgical illustrations and charts and graphs, and I actually I lettered the diplomas <laughs> on the oh, no. on the residents, you know, uh, who graduated. Tony, that doesn't sound like you. I mean, well, you I didn't stay long, <laughs> 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 but I did a lot of cartoons. It was actually excellent training for doing political cartoons because uh, a lot of lectures that I did slides for uh, had very important and succinct points that the doctors wanted to have communicated visually. Mm -hmm. So I would try and figure out how to do that. Mm -hmm. yes. Now, uh, now I think you got your, your degree from, from UCLA? Right, in, okay. in biological illustration. It was sort of a double major of art and zoology. All right, and then you started working in medical illustration after school. Right. Okay, now that, that was around when? 66. Okay, so it's like just that. during Vietnam. Mm, well, Vietnam was just becoming very serious, mm -hmm. and uh, and I and because of that, I became interested in politics. And very shortly after that, started I went back to UCLA and asked them if I could do three cartoons a week in the uh, school newspaper. Oh, no kidding! And that's the first political cartoons that I did, and I did that for four years until I went to the Philadelphia Inquirer. Okay, so and and so you were doing kind of anti-war, anti-war well, stuff. Well, started off being anti-war mostly because that was the issue that got mm -hmm. me interested in politics but then it grad you know branched out Reagan was the governor and mm -hmm. there was a lot of stuff going on free speech movement at Berkeley and mm -hmm. student rebellion and everything so there was lots to comment on 
and uh, it, it was excellent training. Had you been uh, uh, politically active up to that point? I had not been at all. No uh, kidding. I did cartoons all through college, but they were about, uh, you know, uh, what was going on on campus socially and athletically and stuff like that. Jeez. Now, okay, now you're drawing during, uh, uh, I, mean, you, I mean, you're doing political cartoons during like 65 and 66. Right. So you were really kind of one of the first people to ever kind of draw Reagan during that time. Well, uh, no, all the political cartoonists in California were drawing Reagan. Conrad was... I was, didn't draw Reagan until, <laughs> until he started running for president. You know. uh, uh, has, Reagan, has Reagan changed over the years at all? Well, Reagan hasn't changed uh, at all. He's amazing. In fact, he seems to get younger as time goes by. <laughs> but, of course, my drawings of Reagan have... I mean, I look back at those early drawings and they look terrible to me. Uh, I don't yeah. know if you have that same experience, but oh, I'm yeah. just appalled I, at what I did last year. I, I do that over like two days, period. <laughs> <laughs> no, I drew that on Thursday. How could I have done that? Can you draw, can you draw an early Reagan? No. Okay, all right, then don't draw an early Reagan. <laughs> I can only draw the Reagan I draw now, <laughs> okay. which is okay, hard then, enough. <laughs> no. All right, well, okay, well, uh, show me how you draw, show me how you draw Reagan. Okay, well, he, uh, you know, he's got that hair, mm -hmm. real easy. Lately, it's, he's pursing his lips a lot, which means he's really struggling. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's our man. That's our president. Our leader, Tony. Well, What would we do without him? Uh, that's true. <laughs> you know, I don't know about you. A lot of people ask me who I who I vote for yeah. and uh, assuming say, that you'll vote for the guy who's easiest to draw <laughs> right? I still write Nixon's name in, in <laughs> all the time you know now now uh, 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 after you were d doing cartoons then for the Daily Bru uh, Bruin yeah. okay then when did you get the job at the Philadelphia in 1971 how how well I uh, there was a letter written to the editor of the UCLA Bruin by a uh, the editor of a very good paper in Riverside, California. And mm -hmm. it was not a letter for publication. They, this uh, editor in Riverside watched the UCLA paper for talent, and he would hire them at very cheap rates <laughs> when they graduated from school. And he mentioned this letter, hey, you got a pretty good cartoonist. So the next day, I was out there with my portfolio and covered his desk with a hundred drawings. And I, you know, he looked at these, and we're talking. And he said, finally, well, uh, what do you want from me? <laughs> and I said, a job. <laughs> Of course. <laughs> and he said they couldn't do it because they got Malden for $5 a week. Oh, and gosh. they got Herblock for $7 a week. <laughs> and they couldn't possibly hire somebody like me who would take <laughs> more than $11 a week to <laughs> <Right>. live on. <laughs> and, uh, he, but he did introduce me to some syndicate people. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, journalism is a, is a small world once you get into it. Mm -hmm. And one thing leads to another. And all those contacts are what help. So, so finally I found out about an opening in Philadelphia and wrote to them. Well, so you just lucked out. I mean, a, a, a lot of a lot of guys have to start at little bitty papers, you know, and just. I would have gone anywhere. I yeah. I tried to go to Macon, Georgia. I tried to go to the Honolulu Star. Oh, really? Uh, they sent me a letter saying, "When and if you grow up, there may be room for you <laughs> in American journalism." Oh, oh no! Who wrote? I mean, the editor, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I would have saved that letter. You know. I wish I had. I lost it somewhere. Oh. Okay, now, uh, uh, you lucked out another way by, I mean, by going to Philadelphia, you, you had Mayor, uh, uh, Mayor Rizzo there. He was uh, just elected as I arrived there. Okay, just elected as mayor. As mayor. And, and been so he had, been, he had been the police commissioner. Right. Uh, Wonderful guy for a cartoonist. He was uh, larger than life. St he's still living, of course. He's, mm -hmm. There's a two-term limit on the mayoralty in uh, Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. But he was very charismatic, very big, shot from the hip all the time, never thought before he said anything. He, he advocated once, uh, there was a debate about capital punishment. He not only was in favor of capital punishment, he wanted public executions in City Hall Courtyard. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? So he was great. Oh, it makes a fabulous person to draw. Yeah. Uh, 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 can, you, can you draw him? Sure. Yeah. Let me see what you're... In the talk, uh, 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 tell me about you know, tell me about some of the things that you hated hated about him. 
Well, he was he was a real old time politician who was not really very interested in serious urban problems of which Philadelphia has many. Mm -hmm. But uh, so he wasn't worried about the school system and economics and jobs and he liked power. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> I used to draw him as the Lone Ranger. <laughs> Only because he was really not interested in looking at just a whole lot of things, I would uh, I would draw him with no eye holes in his mask. Uh, <laughs> so he's a blind Lone Ranger. Lone Rizzo. <laughs> <laughs> Tony. Oh, that's fabulous. And then you were his, and, and you were, were his nemesis, I'm sure. Yeah, that was fun. You know, I remember one time uh, you had met him at a party or something. And, and uh, you saw him there, and he said, hey, uh, oh, 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 this is after he had, he had stopped yeah, being mayor. Yeah, I told him that I, I actually missed him. And then what did he say? He says, uh, har, har, har. <laughs> <laughs> he was wonderful. <laughs> uh, did he ever ask you for any of uh, any of the cartoons that you did? Yeah, he asked me for one. I did actually. You know, people are always complaining that uh, people like us never do any positive cartoons. It's all negative. All mm -hmm. well, Rizzo actually refused a forty thousand dollar fee for something. I forget what this was all about, but uh, he turned it down, saying that that would be a conflict of interest. And I did a positive cartoon about that. <laughs> declared it to be, in fact, a finally a positive cartoon. Oh, that's great. Had the Liberty Bell. And so he asked for the original? Bonking for him. Yeah. Know, and and so he liked that one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and he gave me a little Liberty Bell. Yeah. I wonder what, <laughs> I, I, you know, I wonder what these guys do with our cartoons when they ask us for them. As long as you spell their name right, they like them. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Now, now uh, uh, your cartoons are probably some of the strongest in the country. And it seems to me that a lot of cartoonists, when they start doing cartoons, they start with the editorial page, or they start with the, uh, the front page, and they read the headline, and then they say, well, I may as well do a cartoon about that. But yours always seem to have too much fire for that. Well, I might start that way, too. But with cartooning, the important thing is, you know, what are you going to say about whatever subject it is you've decided to focus on? Mm -hmm. uh, and once you figure out what you're going to say, then, uh, you know, then you start to work, free associating and trying to figure out how best to say it, what metaphor will, will work, and, uh, you know, what symbols, if any, can you use to convey or to talk about what you're talking about. Sure. Well, and, so. and, and of course, you use symbols probably better than anybody else I've, I've, I've ever seen. Tony, whenever I draw Uncle Sam, I'm doing Uncle Sam here, whenever I do Uncle Sam, my cartoons look like they were drawn in 1935 or 1940. You know, they should be Uncle Sam kind of uh, a walking into the quagmire of, <laughs> of the Depression, you know, saying, I'll, you know, and he's rolling up his shirt, his, his, his shirt sleeve, saying, I'll save you or something. But when you draw Uncle Sam, it looks modern. It looks like the appropriate thing to do. Well, I'm, I'm glad to hear you say that because uh, the only rule in cartooning is that uh, the cartoons have to work. Mm -hmm. And uh, if they don't work, you know, you're doing something wrong. But I actually, if I could figure out a way to avoid using Uncle Sam, I probably would. But the <laughs> fact is, I can't. So, I mean, sometimes I have him as kind of a befuddled gent here with, uh, you know, sort of in a, in a hostile world that he doesn't quite really understand. Mm -hmm. Or he's capable of, uh, of being a bully, mm -hmm. whatever, you know. 